Hello and welcome to Mountain Aromatics. I am going to go over how to make tinctures. I have had a number of people who've written in and asked, how do you make tinctures? How do, what is that process like? How long is it? What are good materials? What are sucky materials to use that don't work? Because that's a great question is finding out what materials do not work. So that's what we're going to do today and class starts right now. So what are tinctures? Tinctures are um, a, well, it has to involve perfumers, alcohol, or alcohol, like a high grain alcohol, really high grain. Vodka is not going to work. I'll go into that in just a minute. But it needs to be like Everclear or perfumers alcohol in order for this to work and a material. So, and it could be multiple materials, but it's just a material and something else. So oil does not count. If it's oil is used, it is not a tincture. So, and there may be some people out there, <laughs> you can get to the nitty nitty gritty and say, well, this other thing can be a tincture as well. Well, overall, if you want a, a, most people consider this the definition. It is a perfumers, alcohol, or high grain alcohol with a material of some sort. And it could be roots, stems, leaves, um, all kinds of things like that. Bark. Um, I have um, lavage here, lavage root. So I have a root here. And I have made a tincture with this before. So I'll just start with the basics with why can you not use vodka for making a tincture? Well, technically you can, but why do you not want to? You don't want to because there is a little bit too much, my child, oh my God, there's too much um, water in there. And when so for tinctures, they're going to take a lot of time. So if you are not patient, this is not going to be a fun project for you at all. Just from the start, just a heads up. Because it does take a lot of time. So when you have that material in here, plus your alcohol, um, bacteria can breed when there is water when there's the addition of water into that. So that's something that vodka, that's why vodka is not a good idea. And I'll also go into a lot of times using fresh herbs, things like that, you don't want to use. And you're like, what? I'm telling you, you, you don't want to use. Why? Because um, it is going to have some water content to it and that water is going to be squeezed out and it's just going to end up not being okay. And you're going to end up breeding material that's in there and that's going to mess up. You're not going to be able to use it. So it's useless in doing that. So <clears throat> I'll just stick with that one. So let's say you want to do lavender and a lot of times when lavender is used, it's going to be um, not just the lavender buds, but it's going to be the stem as well. Because if you get lavender and you smell the stem, it smells like lavender. There's a lot of aroma in that stem as well. And that is, all of that is used in steam distillation. They don't just take the buds off and just use the buds. Lavender would be crazy expensive. You can find that and it's called lavender fine essential oil and it is really expensive and really beautiful, but all of your lavenders, your lavender from Italy, from France, whatever, it is going to be the buds and the stem part used. Um, usually about this, 
this much. They'll start at the top and go to the bottom and cut about there. It's about how much they use. So there's all these bushels of lavender that they put in there and use. So if you do want to use, let's say, fresh lavender, that's why I was bringing it up. You're going to want to take that lavender and let it dry. You don't have to let it dry completely, like dry for six months or something. But if you, like I live in Colorado and it is very, very dry here, you, I can leave that out and a lot of that moisture is going to evaporate after it's cut. And um, another thing that you could do, let's say you live in the south part of Texas or in the south in the United States, it's very humid. You could take those lavender, that lavender that you cut, and you can put it on a large baking sheet, a half, 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 half pan, half sheet pan, and spread that out. And you'll turn the oven to its lowest setting. Don't put the stuff in yet. Just let it warm up a little bit. So in that very, very low heat. And then after it's warm, turn the oven completely off. Stick that in there. And... It will be very, very low humidity and kind of, it will be a low heat and let it evaporate off. So that's something that you can do if you would like to, there's, you know, or you can lay it out for a couple of days, whatever. You just want to get some of that moisture off. Then you are going to chop that up all super, super fine, super fine. And then you're going to add it to a clean, sterilized, um, a jar is the best because you're going to shake it a lot and it's just a jar is best because you want to get the tops where it is separated. You, um, you want to buy the tops that the top is two pieces. Um, because it's easier to clean and you want, you just do you just do anyway so um that is fresh herbs and how you use fresh herbs you're just going to need to be careful if you choose to do that you want to get as much moisture as you can out now the main thing that people are going to use is going to be dried herbs roots stems leaves petals whatever dried what you're going to need to be careful of or consider in that regard is when it is dry, <clears throat> and here I have lavage, L-O-V-A-G-E, lavage root. When you pick something and it is dry, you want it to have a strong aroma. And this does. This has a really strong, I don't have to, I'm not kind of wondering, I can't really smell it. It's very strong. That is a material you want to use. That is a material that will work for tincturing. If it does not have a strong aroma when it is dried, you are not going to get a strong aroma with your finished product. So you have to choose a material that is very strong when it is dry. Hi, Corey. Happy Friday to you, too. So that is what those are the types of materials that you're going to want to use for tincturing. So I will tell you some materials that do not work with tincturing and materials. That's my pup and materials that do work with tincturing. So let me start with some, now I have to think about what did not work. Um, I'll just start with, they'll come to me in just a minute. So I'm going to start with some materials that really do work. Um, you are welcome, Corey. Um, so some of my top ones um, are acacia flowers. So there were dried acacia flowers. And what is funny is I'm going to go back on my word that I just said. They don't have a strong aroma when they're dried, the acacia flowers. Um, mimosa is the other word, just for some of you who don't know that. Um, 
mimosa flowers, acacia flowers, same thing. Um, and they're actually the way that they are structured. They don't just crush. They're, they're kind of hard to kind of crush down and you do, you want to, it doesn't have to be a powder, but you want to get it closer to the powder instead of buying your acacia flowers where they're pretty intact and sticking in, in there. Don't do that. Kind of crush them as much as you can before you add them into your jar. So the acacia flowers are in Incredible. It's six months, minimum six months. So you're going to have to have patience if you're going to do tinctures. You're going to have to have patience. The acacia flower, which this is it. So you can see the color. It's um, a dark red with orange. It's really hard for you to see. Um, but it is, it is absolutely beautiful. And I don't know why this side is still dark. It's so bizarre, whatever. Um, but the dry down is what is crazy, crazy. The dry down with this is insane. I love it. I would be one of the things I would tell you, tincture it. You won't go wrong if you've never tinctured before. It is a great one to start with because it will work. It will. It's incredible. Um, I use perfumers alcohol to tincture. It's just what I choose to do. If you're going to choose something different, it needs to be um, ever clear. Just pick one of those. If I, I would, I'm glad I remember this. So the other, the other deal is, is that if you are tincturing materials to be consumed get your Everclear and use your Everclear. If you're going to tincture something, because there's tons of things that you can tincture. I'll give you one right now. Cacao powder, not cocoa powder. There's a big difference. Cacao powder, cacao is C-A-C-A-O, not cocoa powder, but cacao powder is the, um, the cacao pod, the chocolate pod that they pick off and they're going to open that up and they're going to get the big chunky white seeds and they're going to lay them out and they are going to let them, I'm telling you the process for making chocolate, how they do chocolate. So they're going to let those big seeds, those whole um, seeds out and in the sun, they're going to dry them, blah, blah, blah. Um, they actually, um, Oh God, what is the word? They, um, not putrefy, but, um, shit, I forgot the word. Anyway, um, they'll take that. And then once you break those into small pieces, those are called cacao nibs, N-I-B-S. Those are the cacao nibs. They just take those, that either that cacao or those cacao nibs. Ferment. Thank you, Amy. Ferment. So they let that ferment. Then what you have left is the whole um, cacao. And you're going to, when you break that cacao up into pieces, they're called cacao nibs. And then you can, they'll take those cacao nibs and they will powder it. That is not cocoa powder, not the same. So you'll, you want to get the cacao, the cacao, C-A-C-A-O powder, and that's what you're going to use. And if you want to consume that internally, use your Everclear. So then you can use it in your perfumery or you can use it internally. Up to you. But that's one of those things where you can... Um, <clears throat> that's one of those things you can, I will check that email. Thank you. Um, that's one of those things that you can go both ways. Um, in all of my tincturing, I have completely used perfumers alcohol, which you all know you cannot consume. You'll throw up everywhere. You probably won't even be able to swallow it because it's so nasty. But anyway, um, so the cacao is another one I would tell you, it works, try it, you won't go wrong. Now it does not, 
it's a beautiful chocolate. It is not one that lasts forever and ever. And I will just tell you, almost all of these don't last. Oh, it's going to be 50 hours on the test strip. No, it's not like that. I, I think for me, the way I would explain it to you when you are using your tinctures in your perfumery, think of it more as a top note. But when I say that, just know that there's going to be a dry down that is really pretty nice. Um, it's just not going to be super strong. It just, I, when I don't want to use like, um, I don't know if you have chocolate absolute or something like that, um, which has some longevity and a pretty big dry down. This has a much softer, subtle dry down and aroma. So this is a great one to use when you just want a little bit of um, soft cocoa, but it's cacao um, in your fragrance. So that's a great thing and it absolutely works. So I'll just say in the beginning that my, my other objective in this video is to tell you ones that work for tincturing and ones that did not work for me at all. So, so far I've given you two. I'm gonna give you another one. It is Angelica Root. Kinda looks like this. It's just really hard. Um, th this, I'm showing you the Lavage Root. So don't say, mine doesn't look like that. Because I'm just showing you Lavage Root. They look kinda similar. Anyway, when you do your um, lavage root and your angelica root, you need to powder it down. I did not and would not, let me get one out. I do not, and, and the lavage root is hard, hard. That's a lavage root. Um, you have got to powder it down. So get a um, coffee grinder, coffee bean grinder, the the kind of the, in the top where you pour some in whatever and grind it and then you flip it over and you have it the powder you need to just buy one for tincturing um is going to be the thing that i'm going to tell you to do that's going to be the best thing to do so um because this is so hard your i mean i could barely break it but um your tincturing is not going to work if you don't do not do that. There's not enough surface area here for it to do anything. And it's impermeable. It's just too hard and it will not work. So whatever you use, it's best to use a powder. Um, but Angelica root, it is beautiful, incredible dry down. So, if you have angelica root oil, it is obviously going to be way more concentrated, way more piercing and strong and in your face and pointed. And this angelica root, beautiful, softer. Everything is going to be softer with your tinctures. And this is no exception. It is absolutely mind-blowing to me. It is another one where I would say get some angelica root, powder it down, and tincture it because it's incredible. The dry down is just gorgeous. To me, it's a little, a little similar with the lavage root, but these two together are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, so that's one thing to actually, when you're a these, there's so many things I want to say. This could be two hours. Um, these two materials, the lavage and the angelica root, are going to need to be nine months. Put it in a bottle, put the name on the top, and put the date, the date that you put it all together, and write it on there, and just put it on the shelf and put it away. You want to keep it in a dark, cool dry place. Okay. Um, so that's what you're going to want to do for your storage and minimum of six months for anything, even the cocoa, the cacao powder, six months, 
telling you, you got to have patience. Okay. Um, do not put it in the fridge. The fridge is not a good idea because it will slow down that process. It will just slow down that process and you don't want to do that. Um, it could be, um, I mean, even if your house is at 72 degrees, that's fine. Um, it, it can work that way. Room temperature is absolutely best. It's not going to be too warm because you don't want it too warm and it's not going to be too cool. The cooler it is, the longer it's going to take. Um, you're going to make it really, really tight. Squeeze the lid really, really tight and you can shake it once a week. If you're one of those people, when I first did it, I was like, every single day, I would shake every single one of mine. I had probably eight going at a time. And I would shake them every single day. And then eventually, I'm like, okay, I'm going to just shake it every Monday. I said, will not make a difference. But once a week, give it a good shake, and you're good to go. You do not have to shake it every day. You just don't. You do not. So those are more that I'm, I'm like, love, love, love that worked really well. Um, I have a couple. Um, let me tell you one that did not work. So I talked about a few videos ago. I was camping in the Rocky Mountains here in Denver, and there was sap coming off of a couple of um spruce trees and it was very big clean sap and I just collected and collected oh my god it took me probably four hours that I collected this sap and I ended up with just a very small amount let's say about this much of sap and it smelled gorgeous Christmas tree it was amazing so I'm like I'm gonna take that sap and I'm just gonna tincture it and it tinctured well, except when I would, because every month, this is something you could do every month. You can go in, stick in a thing and smell it, see how it is. And it smelled amazing. But the problem was, is when I touched it here, it was sticky still. It was from the sap. So even after doing filtration, which I will go over, um, it still was very, very sticky and just is not going to work. It just wouldn't work even with, you know, one or two drops in a formula and then adding alcohol and that kind of stuff. It just didn't work. So when I collected my own sap, it just didn't work. So, but that's another thing that you can do if you want to once a month, you can open your jar and test and see kind of where you are, but you're going to get excited and be like, Oh my God, it smells good. I want to stop. Don't give it six months. Give it six months. Um, and the longer, the better. The, it's never going to make it worse having it too long. It just isn't if you're using, cause it's perfumers alcohol that you're using. So it's not going to hurt it. So, <clears throat> Another one that I did was vanilla bean. This could be one that you don't use. I did. I used perfumer's alcohol, but you could use your Everclear and you're going to take your vanilla bean just like you do cooking and you're going to slice it down the middle and you're going to get a knife and you're going to slide it across and it's going to open up the bean all the way open and it's going to collect all those seeds. You're going to drop those seeds into your jar and then you're going to take your seed and you're going to slice it up into tiny little slices and you're going to add that to your jar. And this one's expensive because you're going to want to do about five. You, I mean, if, if you, do, you could do one, you could do one. If you do one, you need to have less, less alcohol 
that is then is in this jar. You need a, a tiny amount of alcohol. You just are going to need to do that. I used either five or six. And the other thing that you're going to want to think about if you're doing your vanilla is your vanilla bean. Is it Mexican? Is it Madagascar? Write that on there as well. So, you know, write your date, vanilla bean in PA or in um, your Everclear, whatever it is. Put all that on the top of your jar so you know what you're doing or, or everything that's in it and the date. But the vanilla tincture really worked. It was awesome. It It is another one. I mean, nine months, not even six. I would do nine months with the vanilla bean. And it is so complex. When you go and you're cooking and you're using the vanilla extract, and you're like, what is extract? Extract is all the additional other things included and sometimes not alcohol. So lots of water, alcohol, blah, 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 blah. That is an extract. A tincture is with alcohol. That's the difference in the two. Um, you definitely want to, good question. I didn't go over that, um, Elsevier. So however much material you put in there, you want to put alcohol just above it covering your material. So that's what you want to do is making sure you just kind of cover your material, um, top it off where you just have a couple of centimeters of alcohol on the top. Um, the vanilla worked, the vanilla beans that completely worked, loved it. Another one that was, okay, seaweed. There's multiple types of, excuse me, of seaweeds, and you can get some organic. Um, sounds funny. How could it be organic? But anyway, you can get some seaweed in <clears throat> your, like, nicer places where I wouldn't get seaweed just from the grocery store. You know how they have sections where they have seaweed, whatever. I would go to, like, a an Asian market, and they're going to have higher quality seaweed. You could go there and get some seaweed and tincture it. And that's exactly what I did. And the first four or five months, I'm like, this is so stupid. This is not working. This is just dumb. And then nine months later, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. And this is it. And it is just very, very dark. And that's being filtered. Um, it, it smells just like the ocean and the beach, but very, very seaweedy salt. You can smell the salt in there. It's very, very complex. And you would only need a drop of this in your formula and it would stay. This one would be a middle note. This one is going to have a really beautiful dry down. To me, tinctures give a beautiful dry down and that is where they smell the most and the best is in the dry down and you'll know because you'll be using your test strips to smell it and the dry downs are crazy they are different than remember like the angelica root and the angelica root oil that you have it's going to be a totally different dry down than this one is going to be than the tincture is going to be and this is just going to be softer and still angelica root. It is gorgeous. I cannot express how beautiful it is. It's amazing. So I will tell you, I'm not even going to make you guys pay for this. Oh my God. This one is crazy. Toasted coconut tincture. This one is one of my secret weapons. It is amazing. I got organic coconut untoasted because you want to toast it yourself because you have control. So you're going to get your organic coconut, not sugar, just plain coconut. Nothing has been done to it at all. No sulfur at all. So 
you're going to spread that out on a sheet pan and you're going to have the oven down on low, probably 300 degrees. You're like, I need to know what degrees, 300 degrees. It completely spread out evenly and stick it in the oven. And I promise you, it will toast completely even. Make sure you, your oven is completely all the way up to 300 before you put it in. Um, but your house is going to smell so amazing. And it's going to be crazy. So one thing that you're doing is you are drying the coconut out in that process in the oven and let it brown. And you're going to be like, oh, no, it's a little too brown. No, perfect. It's perfect. It will let it. When it's just lightly brown, no, let it get a let it get a little brown, not dark brown, but not light brown. You want it to be brown almost to the point of, oh, no, I think I kind of overdid it. Nope. Perfect. So you're going to bring that out and let it cool completely. Just walk away and an hour later, come back. You're going to gather all that up and here again you're going to have to powder it down. So you're going to use your um, coffee bean grinder. This is important. Think about it. Your coffee bean grinder produces heat. So you're going to want to do small little batches where it does not heat up because it's going to start to break down and heat it up and the oils are going to come out. So you don't want to do that. You want to do it in small little batches when the whole thing is cooled. Um, when your blender um, is cool and don't use it when it's hot. So just use some fruit, 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 and that's it. And it won't be too hot and powder it all down, put it in here. It won't take a lot because it, uh, you know, a, a little will go a long way, put your alcohol in there. The deal is, is that this one's not easy. Um, as you can see, this one's solid. So, and this is after filtration. It's solid, but it still drips, but it will totally dissipate in, in oil and in your formulas and it works perfect. It is so gorgeous. It is toasted coconut. It's very, very nutty and you almost can't tell that it's coconut because it's so nutty. So it's not like super coconut. It's very, very nutty, nutty toasted coconut. So the nutty part is very, very in the forefront and the dry down is gorgeous. It's just crazy. But the reason I was saying it's this one's difficult because your needs to be six months or more. And what's going to happen, it's going to start to separate and that's fine. Don't freak out. Don't worry. But you're going to have to um, filter. So what do I do? I use coffee filters. They're very thin, so I use two coffee filters together, and I use a very clean jar. It's been sterilized. that has nothing in it, and I put a big filter, plastic filter on here, and then the filter papers, the two of them on top, and I dump all of my stuff in there, and I just leave it because it's going to take a while. Um, but the other thing that I do that I crap I didn't mention is that right before I do that only with the coconut only with the coconut I warm it slightly and I mean slightly you just I mean even if it's just holding it like this for a good while heating it up letting all that oil get to a liquid state instead of a solid state okay because you're going to want to do that I'm not going to recommend you put it on your coffee warmer because that's going to be too hot and we're working with pure alcohol. Okay. So I would not do that. And of course you will never microwave any of this stuff ever. Do not microwave. So, but you need to warm it slightly to get it to where it is a liquid. Then you're going to want to filter it. And I filtered this one, the co toasted coconut twice and you will be like, oh my God, but it turned to a solid. It doesn't matter. It works. I promise you it works. You see how it looks like this? It will still drip and it will still work. 
and it will be not a problem at all in your formulas. I promise you. It will not be a problem, and it is gorgeous. It works. <clears throat> now, I said things that don't work. Oh, I have to think back to what kind of did not work. Give me just one second, and let me look. I have some over here that it might remind me of what did not work. <clears throat> okay, I can't think of what did not work, but one other thing I will tell you is that I, this is, some of you may not do this, whatever, and that's fine, but it's kind of cool. So I'm a home brewer, and I did El Dorado hops, so there's tons of kinds of hops, and El Dorado hops is very, very tropical, all the tropical fruit notes come out in that. And let me just grab it really quick if I can reach it. And I tinctured it and it worked because um, it's very, very dark. It's green. You might can see it. Once I do that, you see how it's green. Um, it works. It's but it, and it's of course it's very hoppy, but it's easy to smell the tropical fruit notes that are in here. It's strong. Even I mean the, the hop smell is strong, even though of course you're going to smell alcohol a pretty good amount. So just remember that whenever you open it, and if you're just going to smell it like this, it's going to smell very much like alcohol because it's so strong. And that's why you want to take your test strip and take it out, let it dry, and then smell to see kind of where you are. But I did the hops because I made a fragrance <laughs> based off beer, a hoppy beer. Swear to God, I did, and it worked, and it's pretty awesome, and I've taken it to some breweries around here. And it's based off a of men's, like, citrus because a lot of hops, um, hoppy beers are very citrusy, and then some are very citrus tropical, and I made a citrus tropical men's fragrance that smells not like beer, but smells like a brewery brewing and beer, but not the bad beer smell. I don't know how to explain it, but it worked. I'm telling you, it's good. So that's something you can do as well. I did tuberose petals. I grow, you know, I grow tuberose flowers. And that is very interesting that it works because typically tuberose, you're going to need to do an absolute or you're going to need to do the pressed in fat, um, how the French used to do it. They still do it. Um, and get the, the fat, the aroma out that way. But I did tincture it. And it worked and it's, it, it smell, it's obviously not as strong because I didn't get that. It doesn't pull all the aroma out near as well. So <clears throat> things like heavy narcotic stuff are not going to work near as well. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So um, Al Safir is saying, try to evaporate the ethanol and dilute the tincture material using DPG or IPM because you can't control the ethanol evaporation with the time. Well, I mean, you're accurate. And that's one of those things, like if you're um, kind of obsessive with everything having to be absolutely perfect and complete control, Okay, get your scale out, weigh an amount of your lavage, and weigh out your alcohol that you're putting in, write it all down so you know exactly how much material that you used. And, but the problem is, even with that, Al Safir, is that you still aren't gonna have real control 
unless you pretty much weigh, know exactly how much in grams of alcohol that's in there and then letting it evaporate and then putting it back on the scale and figuring out how much is lost. And then alcohol weighs different than IPM. It, I mean, it's not going to be a complete exact thing, but if you want a very controlled thing, you know, let it evaporate, weigh it, find out how much alcohol that evaporated and weigh your IPM, write that down, and you can repeat this whole thing exactly if you do that. And in that way, you can be controlled, but your IPM is going to weigh a little bit different than your alcohol, but still just write it all down and you'll be good. <clears throat> Let me see what else. Um, Right, Al Safir says that's why he has his way of tincturing. Exactly. So one other thing that you could do that will really help prevent, um, see like my seaweed tincture is way more concentrated because it did evaporate. There's a lot of it that did evaporate. Absolutely, that's what he's talking about. What you could do is you can, that will help prevent a little bit more, is putting on a cap. Just put your use a cap instead of your dropper and then you're going to have to use your <clears throat> pipettes plastic pipettes which if whatever works for you if that works for you do it i just keep my droppers i just use the droppers and that's what i do it just is that's what i do um i have done um just to give you some other ideas i have powdered down frankincense and myrrh together. I've tinctured that. Those are resins, but they worked. And it's a minimum of nine months. I mean, those two um, are beautiful together, but it's going to be nine months. And just don't do a shorter amount of time than nine months. But it completely worked, and it's, it's really, really nice. Again... These are going to be lighter, softer than your frankincense and myrrh essential oils. Totally different. But when you want to add a little bit of softer frankincense and myrrh into a formula, your tincture is a beautiful choice. That is why you want to use tinctures. That's why that can be awesome. And then Alsafir says, I usually tincture materials in one week. I found for me, it takes a lot longer and it could, it could be that. <clears throat> Let me give you an example where I've, I've had to tincture in a really short time, my tuberose flowers. Okay. So when I, I go out after midnight, they're called midnight tuberose because they smell better after midnight between so I usually pick between 12 and 9 and 2 a.m. I pick those, I the ones that are ready, I pick them and I put them in the alcohol and they last in here probably up to three days. And then I need to take those flowers out and throw them away because they'll become transparent and clear. And that's how you know that they're spent or finished or done. And every single day, some of your tuberos are going to bloom and you're going to take those and put them in here and you're going to take some in and you're going to take some of the spent flowers out. And at the very end, when you've done all your tuberos flowers, the last ones are going to be three, four days. You're going to take them out and voila, in two weeks, you have your tuberos tincture. So yeah, with things like that, where your petals go by quickly and start to deteriorate. You don't want them to like deteriorate and fall apart and just die in there because they're still not doing anything. All of that aroma is already pulled out. You want to get it out. So um, that for me has taken me like two weeks. Um, So that's the kind of stuff that I have done. And um, you will just find for you, just 
cardamom, cardamom seeds. Take some of those. And again, with whatever you do, I'm going to tell you to grind them up. So take your cardamoms, cardamom seeds, grind them up, and then tincture them. And I did it, and it works. It's pretty awesome. So again, it's a lighter cardamom and... Because if you use the cardamom essential oil, like one drop in kind of a small formula, it's going to take over and be way too cray cray. So you could use a tincture and it is cardamom and it's a little bit softer. It has definite more rounded edges and you can use a drop or two in a formula and it will not take over, but it's still there. It's lingering light in the background of your formula and that's really awesome. Um, any ways to prevent the lid from sticking to getting stuck on the jar? No, but it, if it does that, that's a good sign. Why? Because that means it's sealed and no more air is getting in or evaporation is happening. So that's a good thing. I am not going to complain about that with it getting stuck in the jar. You are just going to need to get your, I just get my fingernails. And sometimes when you hear that, the little, that means it was sealed well. And I am not going to complain. You want that to happen. Just, I mean, that's all I have to say about it. To me, it's a good thing. And just peel it off somehow. If you need to get, I don't know, a pen or something or whatever to pry it off, that's fine. But I, I'm saying, yay, that's a good thing because it's sealed. Um, let's see. I put saran wrap between the glass and the lid. Okay, this is my opinion, but I, I wouldn't, between the glass and the lid, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Why? I am afraid that because you are going to get this and shake it, okay, once a week, some people are going to do it every single day, it's going to break down that saran wrap. That saran wrap is so thin and all those molecules, I'm, I'm going to say no. You, you don't need that saran wrap. If you have these lids, <coughs> um, this is going to do it. This, this will absolutely work. Just close it and close it really tight and you're good to go. You will not have a problem. I'm just afraid that that material mixed in with this high, high alcohol is, is going to, because it's going to be in there for six, nine months, is going to mess up. It's going to, it's going to deteriorate and fall apart. And then you've destroyed your whole tincture. So I'm going to tell you not to do it. Now, I'm not saying it absolutely does it, but I can't imagine it not doing it six to nine months later and 200 proof alcohol that's being shaken once a week. So great question. One of my tinctures, she says, one of my tinctures ate away at the rubber seal and my alcohol evaporated. That's why I did it. So, um, Did you have a different type? Are you talking about like the rubber seals around it that come off and are separate? So you put the rubber seal down and then because this part is more like a waxy material and this part will not disintegrate at all. So if you are using, um, you know, those kind of lids that stay here and they, and then you clamp it down and there's that rubber seal around it. Yes, the, that canning seals like what you were showing. She so mean this. I have never had it. Um, it ate away at the rubber seal. I. I've used both kinds of alcohols and it's never done that before with this. 
Now I've never used the lids that are attached that, that flip over and that have the rubber seal that can come out separate. I've not used those and I wouldn't recommend them because of the whole cleaning thing and all that kind of stuff. It's just way difficult to use, but I've just, I don't know. I've never had a problem with this at all, but to me, there's going to be a problem with <coughs> the saran wrap that's under, I could be wrong, but it just, I don't, I don't see how it would not mess up if you had saran wrap underneath and it's being exposed to the alcohol for six to nine months. It's just something that I don't think I would do. It doesn't seem like that would stay that way. Um, Um, the seals had bubbles in it. This happened with one of my tinctures. Maybe there was something wrong with that particular lid. Yeah, I had done probably 30 to 35 of these and I have different jars that I've used. Not like all of them were not this exact one, this exact jar, I used different ones. Here, here's an example, I have a totally different jar. Um, and all the ones that I've used, that's never happened, huh? Um, <clears throat> Yeah, it could be the pressure in the jar. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, all I know is I had some of the lids that were the kind that are just one piece, just one piece. And I have switched over to the kind that separate. It just, it's, it has worked better and um, because of the inside of the lid and dishwashing and all of that kind of stuff, it's just worked better for me. You may find something different, but I'm just telling you what I do and, what, and what's worked for me and I've transitioned to this. So um, hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. Um, so <clears throat> are there any more questions? questions with tincturing again you're going to want to filter um at the very end into your another clean jar with a big filter and two i use two um coffee filters instead of just one the one is just so thin when you have things like the hops and that kind of stuff you're just going to need to filter it twice so I just use two filters to do that. Um, and it has worked. And then some of your tinctures are gonna last a little bit longer on the dry down and some are not. They just, they kind of are. The other thing that you can do, if you made a big thing of like my tuberose, I have a, a pretty good amount of tuberose that I did. If it is just too light for you and you're like, I can barely smell it, whatever, you can do this. I'm just saying you can do it. If you want to leave the lid off, <clears throat> it's perfumer's alcohol and it will evaporate and it will slowly, slowly go down and it will concentrate. So if it's not good enough where you want it to be and you have a lot of it, let it evaporate. And it's just going to concentrate and concentrate and test it out and see it wherever you like, oh, there it is. And then stop that process and close the lid. So you can do that to make it more concentrated.
Yeah, I've never, um, I am a mile above sea level. So I'm at high altitude where I live. And <clears throat> so I would think if anybody is going to have problems with pressurization, it's going to be me because of Denver being a mile high. For example, to boil water takes a really long time than it does at sea level. It takes way longer, sometimes five minutes longer to boil water because of rain. But the pressurization, I have not, I have not experienced real problems um, with that here uh, at this level. So, well, I appreciate you guys being here. I hope this was helpful and I hope you um, have learned some stuff. I hope I've given you some things to think about, some things to um, try and hopefully there'll be new things for you. And um, yeah, that is a basics on tincture, tincturing in a nutshell. So I appreciate you guys so much for being here. Um, if you like this, give me a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. And if you like this and this is great learning for you and you would like to um, support me, then you are welcome to do that on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash mountain aromatics. And even a dollar would be super helpful. So I thank you so much and I hope you have a good day.